Here we're going to look at a brief overview of human genes and how they kind of interrelate and some things that can sadly go wrong and what effects them that we may see from that. So human chromosomes, uh, we're looking at the somatic cells of 23 pairs of chromosomes. 22 pairs are autosomes and one pair is sex chromosomes. Remember, two X's is female and an X and a Y is male. So looking here, we have our 22 pairs of autosomes and our one sex pair of chromosomes. Both of these being X, indicating this is from a female. So pleiotropic effects, some alleles can have different effects depending on what source parent. Deletions in chromosome 15 in particular result in these two potential types of syndromes. One if it's inherited from the father and one if it's inherited from the mother. So both kind of are negative. There's no real positive from either, but depending on what effects you might see determines what parent that particular uh, mutation was inherited from. So intellectual impairment, behavior problems, distinctive facial features, you can see here um, the, the hands, uh, triangular shape to the mouth, small hands and feet, indicate that it was inherited from the father. Um, Angelman syndrome is inherited from the mother. This also has you know, the same intellectual kind of problems, potential speech in, impairments, seizures are common, physical features can occur, and this occurs when it's inherited from the mother. So depending on what parent it comes from, in some cases, can determine the outcome that is experienced by that offspring. My, Mitotic non-disjunction. This is the failure for chromosomes to separate correctly during meiosis one or two is termed non-disjunction. This leads to an ab abnormal number of chromosomes. So here's how it should be. Though. Everything lines up on the plate. The metaphase plate perfectly separates. Proper disjunction breaks apart. No problem. Here we're noticing instead of separating out like these blue and green ones did, well, two are being pulled over here during anaphase. This would be non-dysfunction. This would cause all sorts of problems. Um, an example of this could be Down syndrome. Uh, humans with one less autosome are called monosomatics, and these do not survive development. So if this does occur, it really can't get passed on because that individual will simply not survive. However, if there's an extra autosome. It's called trisomics. This is the vast majority of these don't survive. Trisomy for a few chromosomes is capable with survival. However, there's severe develop, de developmental defects. And Down syndrome is one example of that. Um, trisomy in 21, you could see here, um, it'd be XY if it was a male, XX if it was a female. The key part here highlighted in red is that there are three under number 21, under chromosome 21. It should only be two for each. And this is a indicative of Down syndrome, the karyotype for Down syndrome. Uh, probably have seen or know potentially someone who's uh, affected with this particular um, issue. And it's because of the three copies of chromosome 21 that occurs. Non-disjunction involving sex chromosomes. Um, this can lead to ster sterility in the sense where a female is a triple X or a female just has one X, Turner syndrome, non-viable would be O and an X, meaning a male um, can't just have a Y, needs an X and a Y, because the Y only has about 15 or so genes, while the X is much uh, more important. It's got about, there's over 2,000 um, genes on that. Um, males with two X and a Y, um, that's another type of syndrome there that can occur. This occurs because these, um, the non-destruction involving particularly the sex chromosomes, the X and the Y. Either they're separating out properly or they're not separating out. Could yield a double Y gametes. Again, that's not, will not survive. And ultimately XYY um, zygotes. Frequency of XYY is one in a thousand males in general. These are typically phenotypically normal because the Y contains so few genes. Genetic screening. So um, this is something that's available to parents. A newborn infants can be screened for a number of disorders, um, PKU. Genetic screening alerts new parents that treatment may be necessary for the well-being of their infant. For example, a woman pregnant uh, for the first time at age 35 may want to know if her baby has down, increased odds for Down syndrome. Ultrasound as a way of looking at the fetus. Uh, it's a, typically this black and white image, though there are some new ultrasounds coming out that produce more of a 3D-like image. 
And then there's also sampling. In this case, you see here a syringe going in, sampling the amniotic fluid within the womb there. Usually performed during the first month, the fourth month of pregnancy. And then those um, fluid would then be put into a petri dish and examined further. Typically, this is done in conjunction with the ultrasound. Now, this genetic screening brings up some interesting points where if um, a parent's know uh, potential issues with their child, this could increase um, the chance for those parents selecting for or investigating the chance for an abortion or something. So genetic screening is interesting. Uh, there's a lot of counseling on that. There's actually majors involved in genetics counseling. Uh, is once parents have that information, what do they do with that information? Um, and is it for the betterment of them, the betterment of the new, the new unborn child? Certain things to consider. So carrier recognition, identif identification of heterozygote state for a given trait. Um, this can be evident with a parent knows that they're a carrier. They know they may know that they have increased odds of giving that to their offspring. Uh, blood tests are a way that can be detected for this unexpressed recessive genes to know if their particular offspring um, they did get unlucky um, at carrying on or having one of those genes that they might be a carrier for expressed in that individual. Lastly, the human gene um, therapy. Genetic engineering has the potential to replace defective genes. Defective cells can be infected with genetically engineered viruses containing a functional gene as a way to replace that gene. Uh, and a patient's uh, cells can be directly injected with correct DNA. This occurs early on through the process of replication, that gene could be corrected. This though gets into the idea of ethics on should it be done, uh, how soon should they find out, um, and this is an important aspect because there is that gene counseling that's occurring, and that is an important thing to keep in mind when you're looking at, if you're collecting this information, what are you going to do with it, or what if it doesn't turn out the way you think? Is genetic engineering a possibility? It would be something to investigate. Um, would you change cells? Um, and that's just all has to do with the ethics of the individual and the person. And that's why it's wise to think, seek out counseling on these typical de choices and decisions that will have lifelong effects for you and your potentially unborn infant.